He's best known for his love of fast cars and planning the perfect road trip on the Grand Tour, having formerly been the longest running host of the motoring show Top Gear. Jeremy Clarkson has also now found reality TV fame by running on camera a 1,000 acre farm that he bought in the Cotswolds. To talk about all that, Jeremy joins me now from his home in Oxfordshire. Jeremy, good evening. Nick Tom, how are you? Good, thank you. And how's the farm? I hear you've had a little local difficulties today inseminating a heifer, as one does. Well, yes, we've got... I've bought some cows, a flock of them, and um, one was successfully impregnated using AI, and um, one of them, who's my sort of pet cow, really, called Pepper, um, it isn't getting pregnant. Three times we've tried, so we're now going to have to rent a bull. Um, to see if the bull can do a better job than the syringe or the turkey baster or it's actually called the straw, I've learned. Um, and we'll see what happens because if she can't get pregnant, she'll have to go off to market and that would be heartbreaking. So um, fingers crossed for Pepper. Fingers crossed indeed for Pepper. Uh, this all, of course, I suspect will be appearing on Clarkson's Farm Series 2 now. I think you're filming as we speak. Yeah, no, we've been, um, we've been filming it since last July, but it takes a year, obviously, to to film a year in the life of a farm. And so everyone's saying, oh, we can't wait for, for season two. But the problem, of course, is it, it, it takes a year to, to actually film it. And then, um, and then it has to be edited and, and so on and so forth. So it'll be a while before it's, it's on the, the TV. Let me talk to you now about the highly provocative subject of planning. Uh, you've been having your own difficulties. There's quite a bit of it in the Queen's speech this week, which we'll get to, but You've applied for planning permission what, three times now to improve your diddly squat farm shop, and you've had it refused three times, if I've got my numbers correct. Yes, it's, um, I, I've, I've no idea. I must have offended the planners in some way in a column I wrote probably 20 years ago, and I can't get planning permission. Maybe I should buy an apron and join the Masons. I don't know what you have to do, but I simply can't get planning permission for anything. Um, which is infuriating, but it's not just me, as it turns out. I thought it was, but farmers up and down the country are saying the same thing. It's, um, as I'm sure you know, Tom, um, the basic farm payment scheme is being um, reduced dramatically. Mine's gone down from 80,000 to 60,000, goes down to 40,000 next year, and will eventually go to nothing at all. And the government has told farmers to diversify, to think of other ways of making money and not just to rely on taxpayer assistance. So I thought, okay, fine, I'll open a shop, I'll open a, a restaurant um, and sell my, and my produce there. But local government, the local authority just says, no, no, you can't do that. So we're being told to diversify on the one hand and then told we can't diversify by um, local planners, which is, I mean, you, you described me as, Britain's angriest farmer early. I'm not. I'm just think, roll my eyes and just think, well, this is tremendous television. I mean, without knowing it, West <laughs> Oxfordshire District Council is, is writing a fantastic script and every farmer in the country will go, that's exactly what's happening. Um, you know, these, how can I put it, not terribly bright people in planning departments just don't understand what they're messing around with. And I'm seeing the results. I was told to change the traditional green tin roof on... Uh, my shop is much more expensive slate. I was told I couldn't sell milk that was coming from five miles away from a woman who's desperately, desperately um, worried about her future as a dairy farmer because of TB and so on. I haven't been allowed to build a farm track. I haven't been allowed to build a car park, even though the locals are saying there's too many people parking on the road. It just goes on and on and on. And the council's answer to everything is no. But so I'm sort of giving up, really. I'm just going to do what I learned at school. Do what you learned at school? Yeah, get round the rules. <laughs> I mean, Jeremy, the serious point here... Do you worry about that? When they said, you've got to go to chapel, I just thought, hmm, no, you see, I haven't got to go to chapel. I just have to work out how I don't have to go to chapel. <laughs> there are ways around these rules. I mean, as I say, they're not terribly bright. We'll get round them. The serious point is that you're not the only farmer uh, with this problem. Farmers all over up and down the country uh, have to diversify because it's so hard to make any money now. They're not being able to. You've just given your example, why not? Uh, is there a role for government here and what do you want the government to do to help? Well, yes, I think there is a role for the government. I think at the moment, farmers, as I understand this, and I am a trainee farmer, let's make no mistake about that, are allowed to 
change buildings that are smaller than 150 square meters, um, which is very, very small. But, you know, can, they can turn them into, I don't know, garage workshops or gyms or something and rent them out to local companies, which provides employment, keeps the farm going, everybody's happy. Um, I think it should be slightly larger. I think that farmers shouldn't be allowed to build solar farms or housing estates without proper local consultation, obviously. But I just think that the government should enable farmers to alter buildings of, say, 500 square metres without necessarily having to go to local planners who are inevitably swayed by people in the village who wear red trousers and, you know, make fools of themselves and object. Um, so that's what I would like to see is just a little bit more. If they're going to say to farmers, you must diversify, they must say to local authorities and you've got to let them. What do you think about this proposition by Michael Gove this week in his levelling up, which was in the Queen's speech, of, of giving local people a greater side by referendums? Residents now getting to vote on proposed changes like extensions, loft conversions or the diddly squat car park. Well, I've, I've written about this actually for my column in the Sunday Times this weekend. Um, it's, uh, and then found, as I finished it off and sent it, I looked at the Matt cartoon of the Daily Telegraph and found he had exactly the same idea as me. Is the man in our village who's objecting, I just want to pull his house down and we'll have a vote. Um, now, I, I can't see that working because you're allowing local people to, be, to say whether things can happen or not. And local people always say no. They always, do you want to have a new house in the street? No. Do you want to have a shop? No. Do you want to have this person to have a loft extension? No. Do you want them to have a conservatory? No. So it's always going to be no if you have referendums. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily going to work. It'd be nice if it did, but I don't think it will. All right, uh, Jeremy, finally, you've got involved in a, another row this week. Uh, this time, uh, about rabblers, you've told Avon and Somerset Police to make it their number one priority to catch a dog walker who attacked a farmer with a rock. Uh, an extraordinary story, but why should it be the number one priority? Well, I don't think that's necessarily controversial. I think if you have these lunatics that come to the countryside, and I've experienced them in, um, in recent days and weeks, months, who really don't understand how the countryside works. And this guy walking his Staffordshire pit bull, which means he's on benefits, has simply thrown a rock at a farmer who was ploughing up a footpath. And I don't know whether he was ploughing up a footpath or not. I do know that he's entitled to plough up a footpath, providing he puts it back within 10 days, which farmers invariably do. Um, and he's thrown a rock at him. I saw the photographs of blood pouring out of his face. He's 70 years old, this man, trying to grow food for the nation, and then an idiot has thrown a rock at him. Well, I mean, Avon and Somerset Police spent an awful lot of time, as I recall, trying to find people who or not thrown a statue into the river. Well, come on, if they can do that, they can get off their bottoms and go and have a look around and find this man with the pit bull um, who's bald and they have a description and go get him. Let's throw the book at him. OK, Jeremy, we're out of time. Uh, my 12-year-old son, though, will kill me if I don't ask you who you think is going to win the Formula 1 championship this year, who's a Formula 1 nut. Will you indulge him and me with just that? Well, one? I mean, listen, I know no more about Formula 1 than anyone else watching. I mean, I would, I would think it was, it was going to be Max, but, he's, uh, but it might be Charles Leclerc, I don't know. All I will say, after what you were saying to um, Piers earlier about the football, I hope both teams lose. <laughs> Not possible. Does Chelsea a parry good if you both lose? So just do that. Yeah, well, you've got third place. Um, all right, Jeremy Clarkson's been a great or person have we? as always. Or have we? Well, yeah, TBC. Uh, come on next week and we'll talk about that too. Jeremy, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure, Tom. Thank you very much for having me.